Now, let's go a thousand times smaller than this. This is 1 times 10 to the negative 15, or 1 quadrillionth of a meter. This is the size of particles that make up the nucleus of atoms, protons and neutrons. The size of a typical atom, however, is 100,000 times larger than its nucleus. So if an atom was the size of Michigan football stadium, the biggest stadium in the United States, the nucleus would be a marble sitting in the middle of the 50-yard line. You would think that we're getting close to the smallest size theorized to exist, the Planck length. But we are nowhere close. You have to go a quadrillion times smaller than one quadrillionth of a meter, or one times 10 to the negative 30 meters. And you would still have to go another 100,000 times smaller than that, or one times 10 to the negative 35 meters. Then you would be at the Planck length. In fact, if an atom was the size of the Earth, a Planck length would be smaller than the size of an atom. It would be about the size of a proton. But what exactly is a Planck length? And why is it the smallest length? Planck length is actually derived from three fundamental constants of the universe that define the properties of space-time. The speed of light, c, which signifies the maximum speed of communication in the universe. The gravitational constant, g, which signifies the magnitude of gravitational force between two massive objects. And the reduced Planck constant, h-bar, which links how much energy a photon carries depending on its electromagnetic frequency defined by this equation. These are really the only constants that define the fundamental properties of the universe and all its contents. By taking different mathematical combinations of these constants and reducing their units, you can get a length. So as you can see here, if we take the units of the three fundamental constants and manipulate them mathematically, we can come up with a length, L sub p, which is the Planck length. And by a similar mathematical manipulation, you can also get Planck time and Planck energy. But what does this Planck length actually mean? What does it signify? Why is it significant? Well, cosmologically, it's the smallest length at which gravity would have an effect. It's the scale and size of strings in string theory. It's also the scale at which space-time is believed to become quantized in the theory of loop quantum gravity. Why is this the smallest length? Why isn't it some other number? Well, the main reason is, is because it comes from the fundamental constants of the universe. And in 1964, C. Aldermeen determined that using the known laws of quantum mechanics and the laws of gravitation, it is impossible to determine the position of an object to a precision smaller than the Planck length. So from what is currently known about quantum mechanics, a length smaller than the Planck length has no meaning. Now note that I said known laws. It is possible that at lengths smaller than the Planck length, gravity or quantum mechanics behaves completely differently that we may not yet be aware of. Since we don't have a working theory of quantum gravity, this is quite possible. And until we find out what happens at such small scales, we just need to wait for the next Einstein to reveal it to us. One of the remarkable things about the Planck length is that since it's derived from the fundamental constants of the universe, which by definition applies to everything, this length is going to be the same no matter what language you speak, what units you might use, or even what planet you might come from. So that's why if we ever come across aliens from another world and compare notes, we both will have the same length of the smallest length possible in the universe. So we have a common language already with those shy aliens that only seem to show up in fuzzy pictures and remote areas of the United States.